Hey guys, what's going on? This is a video that is kind of related to my history of collecting um, that I did recently. And this is actually a request. And I'll put the, the viewer's name here at the bottom so that I'll make sure I get it correct. This is uh, one that was requested that I show some of my Laserdisc collection. I've been meaning to do this forever. So I'm going to do this in a few parts. And what I'm going to do is, at first, I'll show you where it's located. And I'll show you my Laserdisc player itself. And then I'll go through and show you my discs just kind of really quick. Um, and by really quick, it may take a while, but I won't open all of them and show you anything. I'll just kind of show you the covers or just mention the name. All right, let's switch over here. Okay, this right here looks like Laserdisc, but this is actually vinyl records, nothing too important, just uh, some stuff that probably um, has very little to do with movies. But I was going to show you, I've got my overflow here down at the bottom. As you can see, I've probably got about 25 discs there or so, maybe more. Uh, I'm not really for sure, but I'll go through those here in a second and show you what some of them are. And then this thing here, this wooden deal right here, is where I keep the main part of my laser disc. But before then, I'll go over here and show you. This is my laser disc player. Uh, it's a Pioneer. It's model CLDS250. Um, I don't think I've got it plugged in. Most things like this, I don't actually leave them plugged in just for power problems and stuff because I don't use it very often. But that's what it looks like. It just sits there at the bottom of this shelf. Okay, and then this case here is where I keep most of my laser discs, especially the nicer ones. Oh, sorry about that. These are the things that I usually use. These are the bags. These are the inner sleeves. Those are just some spare ones I've got uh, for future laser discs. But I'll go ahead and show you my boxes here from the outside and some of my other laser discs from the outside. And then I'll go through them later. But as you can see, this is what I store here in this little thing. And anytime you buy supplies for laser discs, uh, most of the time you can buy record supplies. They're always. Um, basically exactly the same but sometimes they'll be cheaper just because they're for vinyl instead of laser discs okay guys hopefully this is not too weird of an angle here but i'm going to set kind of close to where my laser discs are and i will show you that collection real quick uh, this is home alone i'll try my best to not get any glares this is shattered Pretty decent uh, 90s thriller. Grumpy Old Men, of course. With Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau. Classic comedy from the 90s. Uh, and then the sequel, Grumpier Old Men. Grey Stoke. Legend of Tarzan. Tango and Cash. Old classic action movie from the 80s. This is um, a kind of a crazy thing that they used to do a lot laser discs, uh, especially if you bought one from like Sony. I think this is what came with Sony and it's a sampler. It's called Take 5 and it has uh, scenes from movies. It has music videos. It has a lot of documentary stuff, has cartoons, has all kinds of things, you know, on there just to kind of give you a feel of what laser discs are about. Animal House. Gorillas in the Mist with Sigourney Weaver. That one's a little beat up. This is one of my favorites and then also one of my hardest to find laser discs I own, which is Hamburger the Motion Picture. Put that by Image and Media. It's very, very tough to find. Um, Godfather Part 2, which is my favorite Godfather film. Pretty cool stuff there on the back. Paper Moon. Uh, if you've never seen this, this is an amazing classic. It has Ryan O'Neill uh, and has Tatum O'Neill, his daughter, his real life daughter. He's kind of a traveling salesperson that's kind of a con man, and she just kind of falls right in line with that. Notorious. Now, Albert Hitchcock classic. Claude Rains. Um, Aladdin, this one is a gatefold, 
Uh, they used to do these, like you could get box sets. This is the CAV Letterbox Special Edition. And what would happen is, like, this is the front, this is the back, and then this is the gatefold there, uh, or the, the inside of the gatefold. Uh, gatefold is this design of, you know, the thing, but this is the interior art of the gatefold, uh, which is always really cool. Uh, that's one of the great things about Laserdisc is the, the, I guess, the palette that the artwork, you know, is presented on is so large that you get a lot of great detail and there's lots of room that you don't have on DVD or you don't have on Blu-ray or even VHS. But yeah, there's Aladdin. Uh, Reservoir Dogs. This is actually a movie that I got for free way back in the day from Camelot. Camelot used to have a punch card and after you spent so much money you would get, uh, you could redeem it for, um, I think it was like a free CD or movie up to a certain amount and uh, Reservoir Dogs was one of the ones I got for that. Michael Jackson Moonwalker, this is another very hard to find laser disc. Uh, Stargate, and I was thinking this might be a gatefold but it doesn't look like it is. This is the Back to the Future cartoon, which is very, very hard to find. It's only available on VHS and Laserdisc. Uh, VHS has two, co uh, two volumes equal one Laserdisc volume, so there's only three of these available on Laserdisc, but there are six, I believe, available on uh, VHS, but they're all exactly the same. This is Back to the Future. I don't even know if they called these volumes on these. I would assume they probably did, but... Uh, it's about an hour and a half versus, I think the other ones were about 45 minutes. This one has the Dickens of Christmas, uh, Swing Low, Sweet Chariot Race, Forward to the Past, and Vern Hatches an Egg. And as you can see, these two art pieces are basically what the front of the two separate VHSs look like. This one here is another Back to the Future, and this one has Go Fly Kite, Hill Valley Brownout, A Friend Indeed, and The Money Tree. And this is the last of the volumes. Uh, Batter Up, Time Waits for No Frog, Einstein's Adventure, Clara's Folks, and Brothers. This is William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, um, which was really, really popular back in the 90s when it came out. I got this at Blockbuster when they closed out and they quit doing laser discs. I went and bought it at their sale, but this one is... That's what the inside gatefold looks like on that. Pretty cool. But as you can see there on the back, it has that old Blockbuster scan sticker that they used to put on all their tapes and laser discs. Uh, this is Primal Fear, another one that I got. I believe I got this. All these, they have these weird stickers like that on the front. This is actually directly on it on the inside. I got those at another store when I was at college. They quit doing laser discs. Midnight Run, Robert De Niro and Charles Grodin. Uh, this is one I got for a friend of mine in college. His laser disc player gave out. He gave me a whole bunch of discs. Uh, like this one also, Sin of a Woman, Val Pacino. Uh, here's Malice. It's kind of a good thriller. It's very, very 90s. Uh, this is one you don't hear about very much anymore with Alec Baldwin. Cole Kidman and Bill Pullman. This is one I was telling Owen Neal about that he needed to check out if he likes kind of action, uh, crazy, you know, type. It's kind of like a, it's almost like an apocalyptic type movie, post-apocalyptic, but it's really not. It's just these people that are kind of trapped in a dystopian type world. They're on a, um, I guess, incarcerated onto an island, and uh, they just kind of have to live on their own, but it's called No Escape has Ray Liotta in it. This is probably when Ray Liotta was kind of on top, meaning that, you know, he was doing a lot of uh, his big movies as a um, lead actor. And this is the Brady Bunch movie, which I really like, if you like the old Brady Bunch. This is kind of tongue-in-cheek to that, and at the same time, uh, kind of a little bit more adult than the original. Uh, here's Patton. That's a good classic movie. In my favorite Batman movie, Batman Returns, the Michael Keaton Batman with Danny DeVito. Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman. Um, Silence of the Lambs. I've had this a couple of times. I got this originally at full screen, and I believe 
I got this one in I can't remember if this one's the widescreen one or not, but I was really upset. I did have this once and bought a second one, and I may have the other one somewhere else. Jumanji, uh, I really like this when it came out. It's a good kind of family action type movie. Robin Williams, one of my all-time favorite movies, Home for the Holidays. Probably my, my favorite Holly Hunter movie. Uh, this and Once Around is really my favorite Holly Hunter movies. And she was just really amazing in this. I really like Robert Downey Jr. as her brother. The whole family was really great in this. Uh, this is back before Dylan McDermott got really big doing the practice. Leaving Las Vegas, I love this movie. Uh, Nicolas Cage, Elizabeth Shue, this was one that um, was up for the Academy Award that year and that's when I very first heard about it. And um, This is when I really liked Nicolas Cage. I'm not a humongous fan of Nicolas Cage anymore, but I really loved him back during the days when he was you know, taking chances on crazier movies like that. Here's the Brady sequel. Uh, not as good as the original Brady movie, but a lot of the comedy is really similar, so it still feels, you know, really genuine, and it's it's a great movie. Third one, though, I I, don't, I didn't like it at all. I think it's the of the White House or something like that. Eye for an Eye. This is a pretty good uh, 90s thriller. Kiefer Sutherland and uh, Sally Field. It's a good one. Hilarious, hilarious movie if you've never seen it. It's one of those movies you kind of have to watch a few times and it gets funnier in repeat viewings because it's, it's very quotable and it's just kind of dumb in a lot of the parts. Great White Hype with Samuel Jackson. But uh, yeah, it's just, it's a great cast of, you know, like random people playing kind of weird parts. Of course, uh, Pulp Fiction. I got this for my birthday right after it came out on Laserdisc. And my grandparents actually got it for me. They were kind of weirded out by the whole concept. Um, laser discs and this movie and everything. And the store I sent them to, but this one has a gatefold with some great artwork on the inside there. It's from the dance scene with John Travolta and Uma Thurman. But yeah, Pulp Fiction. This is probably the laser disc I've watched the most. because uh, out of all the Laserdiscs I own, this was probably the one that I didn't have on VHS and hadn't come out on DVD. So um, that was probably the most watchable movie I owned. That I, that was the only format I had it in for a long time. Back to the Beach, it's a good classic, uh, kind of throwback to the early 1960s beach movies uh, with a lot of 80s stars in it. It has Pee Wee Herman in it and a bunch of other people. And it's kind of a weird uh, mishmash of uh, of those both together, the 80s and the 60s. Okay, uh, now I'm just gonna open this up. My camera's actually setting directly on top of the, the cabinet that holds my laser disc, so I hope this doesn't shake too bad. Um, I'll briefly go through my X-Files laser discs. I have basically all the ones that came out in the United States. These won't be in any particular order, but I'll just go ahead and show them the X-Files. Um, Nisei, I think, at 731. Those are from the third season. This one is from um, season three also. This is Clyde Bruckman's Final Repose and War of the Coprophages or something like that. I can't pronounce that that well, but it's a good one. It's the one about the cockroaches. It's really, really good. This one's from season three also, The Blessing Way and Paperclip. I think some of the best episodes are from season three, uh, Wet Wired and uh, Talitha Kumi. I think that's how you pronounce that. These are my favorite episodes, probably, as a, as a two-episode set. Uh, this has Pusher on it, and uh, Josie Chunks from Outer Space. Josie Chunks from Outer Space is my all-time favorite uh, episode of The X-Files. And it's the first one where they kind of put fun at themselves and kind of, you know, dissolve the whole uh, seriousness that kind of overlaid the series up to that point. Hyper Baru and Apocryphia. These are from season three as well. You usually get about half this, of each season. The best half of each season came out on home video. These are all duplicated on VHS also. Uh, Anasazi and Humbug, that's from season two. Colony and Endgame. Irresistible and Die, die Hand, Die Burlets. There's a lot of strange names on these, and a lot of them uh, are very difficult to pronounce. 
Uh, this is the pilot and deep throat from season one. A lot of these look brand new, and all I did was I make a slit down the side. Fallen Angel and Eve. By the time I got these, I'd started to realize how easy it was to damage laser discs, so I quit taking off the plastic wrap. Uh, conduit and ice. So you'll notice a lot of them still have their sticker, but they'll be open here on the side. It's a good couple of them from the early, early episodes, which is Squeeze and Tombs. These are both from season one with the guy that was climbing through the walls and all the weird stuff. Uh, Beyond the Sea and EBE. EBE is a pretty good episode. Uh, Darkness Falls and Erlenmeyer Flask. Little Green Men and The Host. The Host is probably my second favorite episode of The X-Files, a really creepy one for how early in the show it appeared. And it is notorious for being the episode that shows you the weirdest thing that that early in the show, Scully was actually uh, present, you know, to verify that it actually happened. Most episodes in the early seasons, they would only happen to Mulder, and Scully would always be the one that was really uh, pessimistic about whether or not it happened. That is a very freakishly, you know, in broad daylight kind of episode, and she's there the whole time. This one has Sleepless and Dwayne Barry. The Dwayne Barry stuff's pretty good from season two. Ascension and One Breath. Some pretty good stuff there with the cigarette smoking man. These last few here are the most difficult to find um, by this point in the show. Uh, season four, they had decided to quit making the, the Laserdisc and they'd quit making the VHS and they were going straight to single uh, season releases on DVD. So these are pretty hard to find. Easier to find on VHS, of course. Heron Volk and Home. Home was a great, really creepy episode and was considered something that really pushed the limits uh, of horror on television. Unruh and Paper Hearts from Season 4 also, and Tunguska and Terma from Season 4. So those last three are easily worth three or four times, you know, what the amount of any of the other ones would be. This is X-Files uh, movie, Fight the Future. This is probably my favorite movies from this Jack Ryan series. This is my favorite, Clear and Present Danger with Harrison Ford. Uh, Cape Fear, just a classic, classic De Niro movie. Blade Runner, and I believe this one does open up. If you've seen the episode where I send, uh, sent a box to Zara Nizarak and he opened that up, um, I had had doubles of this, and the other one that I sent him is the uh, non-gatefold edition, but this one is gatefold edition The Blade Runner. Really cool, and this is on the uh, Criterion Collection. What makes this one unique is this is about the only way you can get the theatrical cut of the movie. Uh, the one that came to home video was called the director's cut and then there was another one you know that's been released for blu-ray but that's the only one that basically has all of the dialogue that harrison ford added later that he didn't really like doing fire in the sky classic kind of sci-fi horror but based on a true story supposedly of a guy and uh, all his friends and an abduction uh, cliffhanger, Sylvester Stallone, Interview with a Vampire, just a classic 90s movie, one of my favorite uh, vampire movies. Tom Cruise there on the cover, and then you get to see Brad Pitt there on the inside. It's just a really great edition of that movie. This is actually my second copy. This is the only Laserdisc I've ever purchased where the original was damaged and I had to return one of, I had to return it because one of the discs was cracked. That's the only thing in time that's ever happened. Uh, Laserdiscs are usually really, really tough. Uh, just not good for scratching, but break-wise, they're good. Backdraft, Kurt Russell. Braveheart here. 
classic, classic movie. There it is. On the inside, in the back, Braveheart. Candyman. With Virginia Madsen on there. Uh, Lion King. This is the uh, just the single disc edition. They did do a deluxe box set of this. Well, they did it like I think a fold out CAV version, and they might have done a box set also. Black Sheep. I know a lot of people like Tommy Boy better, but I always like Black Sheep. Billy Madison. This is probably my favorite Adam Sandler movie. I know a lot of people like Happy Gilmore, but I always like Billy Madison just because of how strange it was. This is one that was given to me that I have only watched once. Thelma and Louise. Pretty decent movie. It's kind of a chick flick and it's kind of not, you know. Of course, if you've seen Thelma and Louise. This one's really rough, too. That guy in college gave this to me, and I think that whole top section was beat up, as you can see there. But yeah, Delman Louise. Indian Jones in the Temple of Doom. Some great artwork there on the inside. I really like the weirdness of that movie, even though I, I miss not having the Nazis and the bad guys. Last Crusade. Here's the front. The inside. Great artwork there. Harrison Ford with Sean Connery. There's the back. And of course, Raiders of Lost Ark. That's one of my oldest laser discs. Probably one of the first five or ten that I bought was Raiders of the Lost Ark. Really cool. Um, Stand by me. Uh, kind of a underrated movie that actually kind of came back and got popular again. Back in the day, came and went really fast, which is Good Son. Macaulay Culkin kind of trying to break away from the Home Alone image that he had. And back during the days when I think his, his dad or his parents or whatever were still um, managing his career. Two Days in the Valley, um, kind of a Pulp Fiction-esque type movie that didn't quite go over that well, but it's okay. It's a decent movie. It just seems like it's trying too hard to be something it's not. Memphis Bell. Pretty decent movie with a good cast. Uh, Jurassic Park. This is one of my earliest laser discs. If I could find it, I bought this at Suncoast. I actually, I pre-ordered it and I picked it up the day it came out and it came with a poster and I think I still have that poster somewhere. It's kind of a long, skinny poster that shows the relative size to all the dinosaurs compared to a person. It's kind of cool. But yeah, this is Jurassic Park. Inside shows the gate of the park itself. And then the back. Natural Born Killers. Two thousand one Space Odyssey. Cool stuff there. Point of No Return with Bridget Fonda, which was a remake of La Femme Nikita. Uh, Basic Instinct, Michael Douglas, and Sharon Stone. The Temp, this is a movie that definitely doesn't get talked about very much anymore. Pretty good uh, thriller. This is when Laura Flynn Boyle was kind of on top. She was coming off of Twin Peaks, and uh, right before she did the practice, she was uh, pretty good in that. Plays a creepy person. Dances with Wolves.
has a lot of written information in there. Who Framed Roger Rabbit, which this was really famous because Playboy did an article where they talked about uh, the animators had made it so that Jessica Rabbit uh, didn't have any underwear in. Uh, the scene where the car wrecks and she spins and everything and that made this very popular because it had freeze frame, you know. Back in the day when VHS really didn't have that capability that well. Uh, Judgment Day. And I think on that Roger Rabbit thing, I think they've since corrected that. I know that's weird, but I think they drew in her underwear. Terminator 2. This, I think, was like the first or second laser disc I got. Uh, this one does have the deleted scenes, which is one of the reasons I was really wanting that. As a, I think, I can't remember if they're added in. I know it's a, the special edition, but I can't remember if they're added in or if they're just in a separate section. Kind of an overlooked movie that people don't talk about that much for Harrison Ford with Garden Henry. About a guy that loses his memory and it kind of just changes him completely. Bram Stoker's Dracula. Some great picture work there. Okay, these are some of my box sets, which is the Abyss Special Edition. And on something like this. It opens up. I have to do this really carefully. It's all just kind of held together with paper. There's a booklet here. Uh, I won't go into all this, but all the discs are over here, and there's multiple discs. Um, like three, I think, discs, and it would be two-sided. So technically, there's six discs. I don't know if it uses all of them or not. This is my seven Criterion Collection box set, which I've kind of shown before in the past. And it's got a really cool booklet. It has some really great stuff that you can see up close but this one was a special edition printed off a special print of the movie that since then DVD has done but back then they hadn't here's Aliens which was my first basically my first collection I ever got uh, but the one I got was really beat up and I ended up giving that to Zara Nizarak and I ended up getting another one because it got damaged so bad but here's the booklet and then all the discs are back there but yeah. and then of course they did another box set of Alien and it is really similar as the insert stuff, and then all the discs are in the back. One of my favorite movies, especially Oliver Stone-wise, is uh, Nixon with Anthony Hopkins. And this one is a drawer box, a draw box. And you pull it out like this. And uh, all the discs are in there. I've got it a little bit padded. For whatever reason, they make these so that there's a little bit of a gap in there. So the movies kind of move around, so I've kind of filled that gap with some bubble wrap. The Nixon box set, which has a lot of cool special features, including deleted scenes that they eventually added onto the DVD that VHS didn't have. This is the Boxing Helena limited edition uh, box set. Uh, this one is actually signed by Jennifer Chambers Lynch, uh, David Lynch's daughter. Uh, and this one's number 29 of 2,500. These were just limited for a short amount of time. I actually got this at Camelot when they were had their going out of business sale, and I got this for like 20 bucks, which this goes for like two or 300 now. Uh, when you open it up, I'll try to do it really carefully. There is, um, this is the disc, and then there's a special gold CD that is included with this. It's just the soundtrack of the movie, but it's the gold if you remember when they used to make gold CDs that were supposed to be better quality and they're really hard to find. But yeah, that is the Boxing Helena limited edition set. I just actually recently got that DVD finally. I'd been looking for it forever uh, so I wouldn't have to watch my laser disc as much. This is the Star Wars special edition which is the 97 edition of these movies, the special edition. We need to open it up. It's got like a drawer box also. 
but it's got a booklet and it has the black Star Wars um, custom made sleeves too, which is pretty cool. But yeah, that's it on that one. And then this is what I got for Christmas one year for my grandparents. This is the Star Wars Original Definitive Edition. And up to this point, this was the biggest and best Star Wars collection you could get. Opens here on the side. I'll try to be careful. It's kind of torn up. And then when you open it up, uh, here's all three of the movies. They're all in CAV, so you have multiple discs per movie. And then there's a book here, which this book was available by itself. This is uh, the, the Creative Impulse, George Lucas. But this was also included with this edition. And what's funny is it's, it's signed in here, to Clint Love. And then it has my grandparents' name in there. And then it says uh, Christmas 1994. So a really, really cool thing. I, at first I was kind of weird about that because I was like, oh, my, you know, valuable collectible, you know, whatever. But since then, you know, I've, I've really appreciated that my grandparents did that because I'll never get rid of those anyway. This is actually the booklet that just comes with it. It's also stashed in here. And it has kind of a little Velcro thing that keeps it shut. But yes, that is. and this thing is very heavy, like maybe 20 pounds. <laughs> it's, it's outrageous. Okay, I think that is it. I just want to say thanks, you guys, for uh, the great feedback on my last video and for the suggestion. I will probably leave it at this, and I will just say that next time I plan to do uh, two more requests. These were all things I planned anyway. I can't do every request, but the requests I've got recently are all for videos I've kind of planned on doing anyway, so this just gives me an incentive to get it out there. Thank you to all you guys that requested the videos. I will probably do next either VHS or I may do my Betamax, which if I do Betamax, I'll probably include it with something else just because it's a lot smaller than my other collections. I hope you guys enjoy this, maybe found a little informative, maybe uh, entertaining. Yeah. So have a good one. I'll see you guys next time. All right. Bye.